Okay. Okay, can anyone hear me? I don't know if I'm having any audio at all. Let's see. Hello? 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 Okay, Test? Okay. Yeah, okay. So we're on. Okay, can anyone hear me? I don't know if I'm having any audio at all. Uh. Okay. I don't know if I'm having any audio at all. Uh, let me. I don't know why I'm hearing this. I should be. Uh, let's. Hello? Okay. So now I'm not hearing any echoing. Okay, so we're here today. We're going to play the Brooklyn Dodgers against the Boston Braves. And um, Dodgers have not been doing too well, but they've got some players back. They got their one of their few good relief pitches back. And I'm hoping I got in game because I wanted to see if I went to the old method, the old video. I'd be able to actually get the video in here. So here we go. Pee Wee Reese. And... Here we go. So Pee Wee Reese is up. It's not as nice as the other video, but at least you can see something, I think. At least you're seeing it. Before you wouldn't see any of that, any of it. So I'm hoping you can see it. There you go. We're getting it. Able to watch the stream here. So it has to be in this mode. And we got the first out. So now we got Carl Perillo. And let's see. This isn't, well, you don't get the little animation as much. And he flies out. And now we got Gil Hodges up. Got two down. Uh, yeah, this is going to work a lot better. This should work a lot better here. Because I can actually do the broadcast. Actually see the game. So, three up, three down in the top of the first. And now the Braves come up. And we have, uh, Joe Hatton pitching. Not a great pitcher, but hopefully he'll do a decent job today. And... And, uh, throw to second. Uh, starts off with a double. This is not good. Okay. Jim Russell is up, and that's the center fielder. Not having a good start today, folks. And man on third. We gotta somehow get him out. Okay, one out. And now we got Bob Elliott up, the third baseman. And he is. We're already behind one nothing, and we've only got one out. Uh, now, Jeff Heath, the left fielder. That name looks familiar. I wonder if he became a coach. Another base hit. Okay. Got to go to double play depth here. Uh, try to see if we can get a double play. And we do. And that ends the inning with not as much damage as I thought we might have. So, now we're up to the sec top of the second. And, uh, Duke Schneider is up. Let's see if he can do anything. And 
he's out. Jackie Robinson. And gets a base hit. The man on first. I'm going to go for the hit and run with Campanella up and Jack Robinson. Nice. Nice job by Jackie and by Campy. Bob Dillinger's up. And we're not going to hit and run with Campanella, but let's see what Dillinger can do. And we get a run. And I believe that's two out. Yeah. Campanella on first. And Marv Rackley is up. Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't have any choice but to let Joe Hatton bat. You're not going to pinch hit in the first inning, the second inning. So I'm hoping he can't have him bunt. He's got a... Ah, he helps his own cause. And that's a nice job by Joe Hatton there. So we got two out. Man on first and second. Pee Wee Reese up. We actually take a lead. And uh, Warren Spawn of all people. And that's it. So a nice second inning for the Dodgers. And uh, let's see if uh, Hatton can do as well behind uh, pitching as he just did behind the plate. Hank Thompson. And one down. Maybe he'll settle down. Phil Massey, the catcher. Infield single for Massey. Okay, one out. Let's go to double play depth. Eddie Stanky's up. Another good player. So we got man on second, two down. And the pitcher is up, Warren Spawn. And Warren Spahn helps his own cause. And Earl Torgerson, the first baseman, is up with two out. Man on first. Uh, okay. We've got to get Jim Russell out now. We just haven't. Oh, man, we are having no luck today. Bob Elliott's up. <laughs> Two errors by Dillinger on the same, in the same inning. Oh, man, this is not our day. Huh. And we finally get out of that one. And that was, those are not all earned runs. We had two out, two errors by Dillinger in one inning. And, uh, yeah. So, Carl Ferrillo is up. And, uh, and he gets a walk. This is good. Gil Hodgers. Let's go. Oh, Gil Hodge was playing center field. Okay, something's odd about that, but maybe he's giving the other guy a day off. Um, so 
So we get men on first and second. We've got Duke Schneider up. Bases loaded. None out. And Jackie Robinson is up. <laughs> One of the people I'd want up in this situation, but let's see if he can do anything. And he strikes out. Now it's Campy's turn. And so now we're again. But now we got two outs, bases loaded. Bob Billinger's up. Maybe he can redeem himself for his l lousy play in the field in the last inning. Nothing. 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 I mean, we are getting no luck in this game whatsoever. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got a run. I thought, I thought he rounded out. That is helpful. How did we get a run on a third out? Oh, well, I'm not going to question it. We need the run. <laughs> And, uh, there's their right field, Danny Litweiler. A single. Hank Thompson, let's go to double play depth. And... So, we've got Phil Massey up, we've got one out, we've got Litweiler on first, and let's see what happens. Did I, oh, I didn't go back to double play then. And he walks, okay, let's go back to double play depth. And Eddie Stanky's up. Snyder makes the catch. Two down. And now who is up? The pitcher. Last time up he helped his own cause. And Robinson takes care of him. So now the score is tied and Marv Rackley is back up. I'm not sure quite what happened. And how... Okay, I'm going to have to look at that again. And Rackley. And one out. And Joe Hatton is up. Let's see if he can do anything. And grounds out. So you got two out. And Pee Wee Reese is up. Got a tie game, top of the fourth, and that's it. Okay, so bottom of the fourth, Boston's up again. I guess we were, in, they played in Fenway. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, Tolson's retired for one out, and Jim Russell is up. So here comes Shen, who retires Russell. So he flies out, and now Bob Elliott, third baseman, is up with two down. And Hannon does not pitch to him. Jeff Heath, the left fielder. And we've got. 
has three outs, and now Brooklyn comes back up to the top of the fifth, Paul Farillo. One out. Gil Hodges is up. Two outs. So now Duke Schneider is up. Let's see. And we've got, looks like, the end of the inning, and the bottom of the fifth, Danny Litweiler is up, the right fielder, and let's see, and he walks, okay, let's go into double play depth, and try to see if we can get him, Hank Thompson's up, <laughs> this is our third error. Okay. We've got man on second. Phil Massey is up. Let's see if we can... And now we have... One out with Eddie Stanky up. Okay, now we're going to go for the double play again. Got to do that. Want to make sure, see if we can, especially with the pitcher up, if we can get out of this inning. And what does he do? He walks every... He walks them. Uh, now they get the top of their order up. And we still need to try to get a double play. This is not gonna... Not our day. Okay. Two out. Okay, now we have a chance that we can get him out without any more damage if he can somehow strike him out. And that retires the side. So we managed to get out of there without that much damage, but now we're still behind. And Jackie comes up. Robinson gets on. We're definitely going to hit and run. And let's see what happens. So we got one out, man, on second. That's exactly what I wanted Robinson to do. Okay, I see why I got confused last time. Rob, Matt. God, our outfield... Oh, this is in Coffarillo's playing third base. Oh, this is weird. I don't know how that happened. That was not the lineup we had been going for. I'm going to have to check, take a look at that afterwards. Okay. And Dillinger redeems himself a little bit there. Drives in the run and is now on second for Marv Rackley. I'm very confused about all lineup. And he strikes out. So we got two out, man on second, and the pitcher is up. We now tied the game. We have a man on second with two outs. Let's consider what do we have available in terms of our all pitchers. 
who is not exhausted. We got Ken Trinkle. How could Dave Ferris be exhausted? He just came off the DL. But we got Harry Taylor and Ken Trinkle. And actually, Harry Taylor's a star, so we really have Ken Trinkle. Um, I think I have to let him bat. Well, wait a minute. No, this is the top of the six, so there are four more innings. Gotta let him bat. I don't have enough relief pitching to... I need to keep this guy in the game longer. Okay, so we he gets out, and now Bob Elliott's up. I want him to get through at least this inning. He gets on with a hit. Let's go to double play depth. Yeah, not what I wanted. Uh, ah, Robinson does everything he can and he still can't get it. Okay. So he's a right handed. Uh, let's see what happens. Well, I think this game is just, I think it's just getting out of reach here. Uh, we got no outs. Yeah, we may not have a choice. We've made three errors. So not all these seven runs are earned. But I gotta get someone warming up. I mean, this is getting insane. So we'll, since he's the only guy we have... And Hank Thompson is up. Let's see if we can get anything. Ah. Uh, this is just getting worse and worse. Okay, we got one out. So let's see if we can maybe strike Stanky out. Johnny Logan. So now we got Warren Spawn up we got two outs and our old Thompson is up Great play by Duke Snyder. He just stole that hit. I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make in an 8-4 to four game, but he did what he had to do. And Pee Wee Reese, start of our lineup. Let's see what he can do. And he grounds out. Call Farilla. We are going against Warren Spawn again. Remember, Spawn insane in Day of Rain. Pray for Rain. And so he's one of their best pitchers. I 
and Gil Hodges is up. Nice. Home run for Gil Hodges. With two outs and Duke Schneider is up. And Duke Schneider gets on. So Jackie Robinson. Let me see something about Duke Schneider. Speed. I'm going to hit and run. Well, it almost worked. And now Jim Russell is up. Okay, I think it's time. How's that doing? How many pitches? 138. Let's do, let's bring in our substitute. Uh... Let's go back. I don't want a profile. I want him in the game. Yes. And I really don't have anyone else. <laughs> so. I don't know if I can pitch, pinch hit next time. I may. I'm putting someone who's totally tired. <clears throat> for the bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the eighth. But well, let's see. We'll have to see what the what the situation is. Jeff Heath, yeah, this game is getting out of reach here. But we get our one out. Okay. Now Danny Litwala, we need a what we need is a strikeout. We have had like zero luck today. Like zero. Hank Thompson. And he strikes him out. That's two down. And Phil Massey. Johnny Logan is up. This is why I don't like to use the list. And this is our relief pitcher and it's getting out of hand. Well, I think at least I had a, a better day. This sending an pinch hitter. Seriously, do you really need more runs? Uh, it's now 12 to 5, and I don't know if I'm even going to bother pinch hitting because I don't have any other relief pitchers who aren't exhausted. So since the game's out of hand, it doesn't matter. So we 
we've got Bob Dylan Drep Campanella got out. Let's see what happens to him. And he gets on. So how fast is he? I'm gonna I'm gonna do hit and run with Marv Rathley and hope that he can hit and run. Okay, one out, and now, I don't know if we have a choice but to pinch hit. I mean, let's look. Before we let Ken turn. Who do we have all pitchers? Who do we have? You know what? Um... I'm going to bring in Paul Miner. I know he's tired, but I need something. I need to pinch it. And... and who's going to pinch hit? Who do I have? We got Pete Risa, who is not playing today for whatever reason. Let him pinch hit. And go back to the game. And Pee Wee Reese. And again, I'm going to hit and run with Pee Wee Reese on. And that's it. Okay, well, we got another run. And yes, I need to... Uh, Pete Reeser, what does he normally play? Is he sent to... I'm going to put him in center field. Wait, what's Marv Rathley playing? Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to put him in left field. And put Paul Miner in this spot and make him the pitcher. And there we go. We'll let Pete Reese stay in the game. Earl Toga Finn. Not that Paul Minner's any better, but it doesn't really matter. We got one out, and Jim Russell is up. That's our what? How many are it? Six errors? Good lord. And two down. And Jeff Heath. I'm, unless something really weird happens, it's only. Okay. So now it's our turn. Our last chance. Uh, call for a low. Let's see if he can do anything. Against the... One down. Gil Hodgers, who hit a home run earlier. Two down. And Duke Snyder is up. And that's the ball game. It was not a good game for us. I mean, six errors. <laughs> and they got 17 hits. I mean, it just, look at this chart. 
this looks like uh, a very sick stock but it was a very sick game for us so we'll leave the game I don't know what you're seeing are you even seeing there you go okay leave the game and save the game gotta always save it if you don't if you don't save it it's a problem So, so that's the ball game today. Uh, my do the Dodgers have not done well. The Mets have been doing well. So let's go, go. Let me get back and switch out to the. This is what you're seeing now. What I want to do is hide this and send to live. Let's see if I get what I want. Oh, he needs to be shown. And sent alive. There we go. Updating. I'm still learning the software. And you should see in a few seconds. Oh! I got three people watching. Oh my. Oh, there's probably two of them on my mind. <laughs> Maybe someone's actually watching. Well, hello, whoever you are. Let's see. Watching now. Three people. And two of them are me. Because I have two different windows open. Okay. Well, if there is another person here, welcome. Hello. Um, baseball history comes alive. So let's see what we got there today. Um, the most lopsided trade in history. Lefty O'Doul for Freddie Leach in 1928. Let's see about that. So, what happened? Let's look at the text. I should... Left also was mine to those who give him credit for the emergency. Exactly 88 years ago today. Excuse me. Giants trade left field due to the Phillies for the aforementioned Freddie Leach. That's right. Freddie Leach. And no, I haven't heard of him either. After hitting 319 as a platoon player for the 1928 Dodgers and a postseason trade to the Phillies, Odu teamed up with Phillies stars Chuck Klein in 1929 was real. Result was one of the best offensive years in baseball history. 398 batting average. 254 hits, 32 home runs, 120. I mean, he just did amazing. After batting, he was traded to the Dodgers. And after traded back to the Giants, over. He is the height of any. He was an all star member of the World Series team. He struck out 122 times, an average of. That's amazing. Offensive. He started career in 1917 as a left handed pitcher. And in 1919 and 1923, he went back. He was a reliever. Then he went, got a sore arm. They returned him to the PCL, was converted to an outfielder, and that when he got very successful. He's being credited for developing Joe DiMaggio. He's also a vital figure in the development of Japanese baseball. Before and after World War II, he was a goodwill ambassador. Which, let's see. Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame. He's never gotten the necessary votes, although it sounds like he should win. But he was traded. So let's see some of these pictures. They got a lot of pictures here. Uh, Lefty Ojo and two Japanese players. Uh, oh, come on. There it is. Let me just 
Dimaggio. He's in the lower right. There's Joe Dimaggio. Right there. Uh, right in the PCL managers. That's him as a manager. So let's see. There's a man in the green suit. That's him in Japan. It looks like a drawing. And 1931 tour of D Japan. Uh, front row, third from right. Okay, that's him with the Giants, and a tour of Japan, oh that's nice, from the kids, left old dual swing, his autograph, receiving a trophy in 1927, the restaurant in San Francisco, the, they say he developed Joe DiMaggio, And looks like maybe an all uh, either before a game or an all no probably before a game between those two clubs. Finding autographs. Nineteen thirty four with his Seals teammates. And in visiting Japanese children. Lou Gehrig and Left the Old Duel. 1961 tour with Joe DiMaggio during his time with Brooklyn. With, with Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe. I guess that's when they were married. You know, something about Marilyn Monroe that you may not know. She, you know, you think, people usually don't think of her in terms of, in being smart. She actually was quite intelligent. Um, what I've read about her is back in the day, if someone wanted to show off and show in, in those circles, how smart they were, they'd have all the big tomes of the day, you know, War and Peace and all these big, thick books. Well, what's said about Marilyn Monroe is that she actually read those books, unlike a lot of them who just put them up there for, sh you know, to try to show how smart she was. She actually read the darn things. I always say about her, which he should have done, is he's gotten out of Hollywood, maybe got a, gone to school and gotten a PhD in, you know, English Lit or History or whatever, something like that, which probably would have, something she would have liked and become a college professor. She would have been a lot happier. But that's just my, uh, my guessing. But uh, don't underestimate. Don't underestimate her. Um, Brooklyn YMCA in 1933. Yeah, he has one of the great averages. You know, had he started as an outfielder and played his full career as an outfielder, who knows, he probably would be in the Hall of Fame. That's with the Seals. The Polo Grounds with... Let's see, with Babe Ruth, Ben Chapman, Ethan Allen, left. Oh, I'm thinking was Ben Chapman might have been the guy who, or was he the one who was killed by a bean ball? Uh, old baseball greats, Governor to left field do Charlie Finley, Joe Cronin, and Casey Stengel. Well, Charlie O'Finley, back in the 70s, of course, for his, his A's, with their uniforms and their, you know, mustaches, when he had a mustache contract for them. So, that's Lefty O'Doul. Very interesting. I think there's another... Let's see what else we got going on here. Cleveland Municipal Stadium being built uh, near completion in night right before it was completed so it took them a while to actually move in there entirely which is rather surprising why they wouldn't want to have 
moved in, in there once it was built and completed um, because it was obviously state of the art for its time and uh, lasted them, I don't know, for some years till 1993 and now they're in Progressive Field which is where the World Series is this year of course or one of the two, of course, Wrigley Field, we can't forget that. Another great ballpark. Um, and who would, Lou Boudreaux would have a little bit of an issue because, let's see what it says. Sounds like he had connections. Mm -hmm. He'd be neutral. Uh -huh. Well, he's cheering for the Indian, in that he led to the World Series victory in 19. Or would he be cheering for his hometown Cubs if he be once man to work for the radio broadcast? Loved both cities, and he's loved in both cities. And he took him and returned to Radio Booth and did it till 1987. So, now uh, let's see. Nice interviewer. Okay, so fun. Move Boudreaux. Nice days early. That's interesting. Little game he played, but there are some nice, some Lou Boudreaux pictures. Oh, celebrating the birth of his daughter, the blue of Larry Dolby's daughter, his Cubs manager in 1960, Hall of Fame. The Jesse Haynes Ford. Oh, wait. I'm not sure which is Boudreaux. That might be him. Um, 1950 coaching kids. Completing a double play with Bill Beck. That's him. With real partner. And Harpo Marx and Bob Feller. Oh, of course, the great Harpo Marx. If you want to read an interesting autobiography, although it's rather long, but it reads a very fast. It's a, for a very long book, it reads very quickly. Um, Harpo Speaks. If you're interested in Harpo Marx, which you can be in. I think I read that book in over a weekend when I was in high school. Uh, Autograph Ball with Bob Feller, Satchel, Lou Larry Dolby in 1948. Then saw that they were the radio broadcast after the 1948 World Series. Last time the Indians won, so we will see. They may win another one. This they're ahead three to one. Bubbling. and here's another Larry Dobe, Ted Williams, and Lou Boudreaux. Bill Beck, that would be Bill Beck. Um, Lou with his wife. Ted Williams, Gene Yawkey, Tom Yawkey. So I guess he was with the Red. And double play partner Joe Gordon. Uh, 
Oh yeah, they used to wear these little windbreakers under their uniforms. I don't think you see that much anymore. Usually if it's, you see them warming up, if it's cold, they got the, the little sweatshirts on that are designed for the occasion. You know, the, you know, what did they say? Train to rain in spring training. Now they have World Series sweatshirts. Anyway, I think we're going to call it a day here. Um, other person, if there is another person watching, thank you for watching. And um, that will be all for today. I'm going to stop the broadcast. Take care.